Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It is my 10 year veggiversary, which means I have been vegetarian for a full decade. And I wanted to make a video talking about my experience, talking about the common questions I get asked and giving you guys advice if anybody out there is interested in going vegetarian or vegan. And I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you do enjoy it, please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and give this video a big thumbs up. Yeah, I'm just so excited to talk about this topic today. I can't wait. First off, let me start off by saying that I do not judge you by any means if you are a meat eater or anything of that nature. I don't want to come across as like a preachy vegetarian or vegan. I'm simply making this video to talk about some of the misconceptions of being a vegetarian and also the fact that I get asked so many questions, the same questions all the time and it drives me absolutely insane. So maybe this video will spread some awareness. And also I want to give some advice if anybody's interested in heading towards a vegetarian lifestyle or vegan lifestyle. Hopefully this video can help you guys. So I hope that you all enjoy. I wanted to start off by talking about why I went vegetarian in the first place and when I went vegetarian like I said I went vegetarian 10 years ago on November 10th 2010 I was 14 I'm currently 24 I went vegetarian because I had already been not eating beef and pork for two years before this so I kind of like slowly integrated into being a vegetarian I stopped eating beef and pork because I really loved cows and pigs and I back then this was probably like 2007 or 2008 when I stopped eating beef and pork back then vegetarianism was so like taboo like like not a lot of people were vegetarian and it was kind of weird and nobody thought you could get protein or anything. So I kept like fish and poultry in my diet because I just didn't really know any better. I was literally like 12 or 13 at the time. So I hadn't been eating beef and pork and then I watched a documentary literally called Taboo, if you've ever seen the show. And it was about Asian countries and how they ingest snake hearts. And I don't even like snakes, but the video showed the snake's heart being taken out while it was alive. And and that absolutely killed me inside. And that was the day I went vegetarian and I never looked back. So I go vegetarian for a lot of reasons. I went vegetarian because I love animals and I really care for them. And I don't wanna be responsible for something else's death. And like I said, if you are a meat eater, I have nothing against that, but that's just me personally. Also, I went vegetarian because of the environmental effects, which I didn't really understand until a few years later down the road. The fact that, you know, meat production and dairy production Production, they do contribute to a lot of carbon emissions and global pollution and air pollution. I just really wanted to help the environment in some way and that's why I decided to do it. <laughs> Later on down the road, I learned a lot more about that. And also because of health, um, there's been a lot of studies about how meat and dairy are not very good for you. And I do still eat dairy, I'll be honest. I'm not a perfect person. And I was vegan for like two years at some point in my vegetarian journey. And I did really enjoy being vegan but I really love cheese and honestly it was for selfish reasons because every time I would go out with people all I could really eat were salads with no toppings because the fries would have been grilled um fried sometimes with like meat products there were just no options for me so I just decided to go back vegetarian but there are a lot of um health reasons why vegetarianism and veganism does work for a lot of people and there's been a lot of studies showing how meat protein and dairy protein do contribute to a lot of diseases so I decided that that was gonna be a really healthy choice for me. Yeah, <laughs> so I guess that's that explains basically all of the reasons why I'm vegetarian. Now to answer some common questions I get asked. This is gonna be a fun one. <laughs> first off, if anybody out there is vegan or vegetarian, you know exactly the first question I'm going to say. Where do you get your protein? <laughs> Let's dive into this question. <laughs> there is a very, very, very common misconception that protein primarily comes from meat. And yes, I'm not doubting that you can get a lot of protein from meat. But here's the thing, meat, so let's say a cow. A cow gets their protein from a plant. So a plant has all this protein stored up in it and then the cow ingests that protein. Then the cow passes on a portion of that protein onto you. So actually, if you're eating just the plant, you're getting more protein than you would get from the actual animal. And it drives me insane when people ask me this question because there is protein in practically every healthy vegetable. Well, I shouldn't say practically every, but a lot of healthy vegetables. You can get protein protein and avocados, um, Brussels sprouts, spinach. You can get it from pretty much any green leafy vegetable. 
your collard greens, your asparagus, your, I, I don't know, there's so many <laughs> different vegetables you can get it from. You can get it from legumes like uh, black beans, any kind of beans, chickpeas, you can get it from peanuts, um, any kind of nuts. There's so many different ways to get your protein. And I just hate that question with a burning passion because if you do believe that protein primarily comes from meat, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you <laughs> have been <laughs> mistaken. The food pyramid that we all learn in elementary school, they're going to tell you that you need a ton of dairy and you need a ton of meat in your diet, which actually is not true. Again, like I said, if you love eating meat and dairy, nothing against them at all. I'm totally supportive of you. I just think that people need to get these misconceptions out of their head because it's kind of ridiculous how many times I get asked this question when a simple Google search will let you know that you can get so much more protein from plants than you can actually get from animal products. <laughs> Next up, this is something that people tell me all the time. It's natural for humans to eat meat. While I'm not doubting that humans definitely can eat meat, I do not think that it is a natural tendency for humans to eat meat. And let me explain why. When humans were first created in the world, <laughs> we actually were plant eaters. And the reason for this was because we had not developed pools yet. If you look at a human, you will notice we do not have fangs to grab onto an animal. We do not have claws to grab onto an animal and kill it with our bare hands. Some people can. If you're Hercules, you can definitely kill a bear, <laughs> but just natural people. These are not natural tendencies to be able to ingest animals. So we started off as plant eaters and then we slowly migrated to becoming meat eaters once we had developed the tools, the fire, everything needed to ingest meat. So I just wanna put that out there because I'm so tired of people telling me it's natural for humans to eat meat, it's normal for people to eat meat. Yes, it's normal nowadays, but that doesn't mean that it's natural or that we were destined to eat meat our whole times or that it's more normal to eat meat than it is to eat vegetables. That's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> Okay, this is another common question I get asked, which is if you're a vegetarian or vegan, why do you eat fake meat products? Products that, you know, resemble meat. So like vegan chicken or vegan burgers or anything like that. And I'll explain it to you the best way that I possibly can. Why do we have decaf coffee? Why do we have non-alcoholic beer? Why do we have low carb brownies? Why do we have diet sodas? Why do we have all of those things? The reason why is because it's not necessarily that people don't want those things, but it is more practical and better for them to eat these other supplements. So basically what I'm trying to say is it's not necessarily that a lot of vegetarians and vegans don't want to eat meat or they don't enjoy the taste of meat, but that they're doing it for other reasons, whether it's for their health, for the environment, for the animal in particular, which is why they might choose to go for the fake meat products. I personally do enjoy fake meat products. I don't like when they are exactly specific to meat because I don't like the meaty taste, but I do like the meat products like veggie burgers and um, things of that nature because it does make my diet a lot easier. And there are things you have to be careful of, like if they have too much soy, which is why I opt for Gardein products, which use more like pea protein and gluten protein. And I opt for Impossible Burgers, which don't use soy, they use like beets. And um, I think they use peas and other things of that nature. But again, everybody's different. And I don't judge anybody for eating meat. I don't judge anybody for eating fake meat products. And I think that's another silly question because like I said, we have so many other substitutes for things that people can't eat. Like for example, decaf coffee. Everybody says why eat decaf coffee? Well, the reason why people drink decaf coffee is because, well, some of them, I shouldn't say all of them, because for years and years and years, they may be used to drinking caffeinated coffee. And then all of a sudden their doctor says they can't have caffeine anymore. So decaf is an easy substitute. Same thing with non-alcoholic beer, same thing with sodas or LaCroix, which I drink all the time because it's low calorie, zero calories and no sugars. It's just a way to help people taste the things that they enjoy without harming them or without using the things that they can't have. And again, everybody's different. And I'm not saying that no calorie things are better than less calorie things because there are like a lot of harmful ingredients in like diet sodas or things of that nature. But I'm just giving a little explanation. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. Okay, next up, does your husband eat vegetarian? So this is another question I get asked a lot. And um, I think the reason why is because people are used to the idea in their head of a wife who makes a beautiful meal for their husband when he comes home from work. And honestly, it's 2020. That is just not how things work anymore for me at least for a lot of people I know my husband and I do eat a lot of meals together but we do eat a lot of meals separately and most of the time my husband does eat vegetarian with me because he does like the things that I cook whether we 
have amazing vegetarian sausage, which I'll have a picture of right here. We eat that with vegetables a lot of the time. We eat veggie burgers with vegetables a lot of the time. Veggie burgers with like sweet potato fries or something like that. We eat eggs a lot for breakfast or boiled eggs. We eat sandwiches. I get fake meat, he gets regular meat, or we have peanut butter and jellies. And you know, when we do go out to eat, yes, he does order steak. Yes, he does order chicken or salmon or whatever. And no, I don't care. That's his choice. But I think it's funny how many people ask me about my husband and I's diet because a lot of families do not eat the same meal anymore, whether it's for dietary restrictions because someone's allergic to something or whether it's because someone has preferences that they don't eat. Yeah, we, we just, we eat different things sometimes. Or something we like to do too is say we're eating a salad one night, I'll eat my substitute chicken with it and he'll make a salmon filet. So yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. And I don't know about kids one day, they'll probably eat mostly what we eat, which will be mostly vegetarian. Um, but I probably will introduce them to me when my husband eats it and they can make that decision for themselves when they grow up. <laughs> Last one that I get asked all the time. This one also drives me insane. It's so funny to me. If you were on a deserted island and all there was to eat was meat products, would you eat meat products? <laughs> This one is so funny. Ugh. First of all, what is the likelihood that I'm going to end up on a deserted island? Slim to none, okay? Let's let's be real here. <laughs> Second of all, why does this question only get asked to vegetarians? I feel like there are so many different ways you can spin this question around. If you are a meat eater and you are so passionate about eating meat, land up on a desert island with only plants, are you gonna cry every day because you don't have meat products to eat? Like, this is just the dumbest question to me ever. <laughs> that would be something that I would have to determine when I. I am in a life or death situation, which right now I'm not in a life or death situation. I can easily enjoy the foods that I choose to enjoy. And there's no reason to have to wonder about one day if I'm on a deserted island, if I will eat meat products. It's just such a dumb question. I'm sorry. It's it drives me bananas. <laughs> okay guys, last up, I want to just give some quick advice for anybody who wants to go vegetarian or vegan in the future. So first off, when I first went vegetarian, I did blood checks like every six months. So this checks your iron, your vitamins, everything with your blood, making sure that it is in good shape. That is something you don't have to do, but if you are nervous about going vegetarian or vegan and you don't know if you're gonna get the right amount of protein or iron or anything like that, it might be a good place to start um, is getting these blood checks. I don't think that they're very expensive especially if you have health insurance. That'd be something I would recommend looking into if you are interested in that. Second off, if you are eating a lot of junk food and you're not eating a lot of vegetables and fruits and, and uh, protein that you do need in your diet, I recommend taking supplements. This is a fun fact a lot of people do not know. So B12, a lot of vegetarians and vegans need to take B12 supplements. The reason why is because B12 is found in dirt. <laughs> So back in the olden days when we were harvesting our plants and we didn't have as good hygiene, we were getting B12 through dirt on our hands or dirt in our fingernails and we were eating, we were ingesting B12. So this is actually kind of gross, but the reason why people who don't need B12 or meat eaters is because B12 is found in the ground, which doesn't really happen if you're vegetarian or vegan very often because you're typically washing your fruit and vegetables. And so that is why a lot of people need B12. And I would venture to say a lot of people who eat meat products also should eat B12 because it is really good for your energy and I have loved take, taking B12 supplements. Other supplements I take are vitamin C and zinc. I really only take those to boost my immune system. Those are honestly the only supplements I'm really taking right now. I used to take a lot more vitamins and I would be interested in taking more vitamins in the future, but I actually don't take them as supplements for my diet because I do eat a lot of protein, vegetables, and fruits. So I get my vitamins and my nutrition from those things. But if you are someone who eats like pizza or mac and cheese every day and you're not getting those vital nutrients, I would definitely suggest taking supplements or vitamins to help you out. At least for the time being while you're learning how to adjust to this new diet. Whew, this is a controversial one. I don't know if everybody's ready. Unless absolutely necessary, do not use protein powder or protein bars. Let me explain why. I think that they're okay in moderation, but a lot of people when they first go vegetarian or vegan eat so much protein powder or protein bars that they are eating way too much protein than is needed needed in their body. We actually don't need that much protein every day and it actually can shut down your kidneys. And I actually had a really bad experience with this because I was eating a lot of Cliff Bars and Lara Bars before I found out I was allergic to dates. And um, I was eating protein shakes every day just to supplement that protein. And I actually stopped peeing. I know that sounds gross, but it's something you really have to be careful for because your kidneys do process all of that protein and it's just so bad for you to ingest that much protein. So I would just definitely suggest 
best if you can get your protein from vegetables, nuts and beans and all of those things, um, hummus, chickpeas, and try to avoid the protein powder and the protein bars if you can, like basically like fake protein. If you absolutely need it, then that's fine. And I don't think that it's bad in moderation, but like I said, when that's all you're eating is protein shakes and protein bars, that is so, so bad for you. <laughs> okay, my two favorite foods as a vegetarian. One, avocados. You can use them for anything. You can put them in smoothies, avocado toast. I eat them on salad all the time. I eat them on sandwiches. I eat them with my eggs. They are so good for you. They have omegas, they have healthy fats, they have protein in them. They have so many vitamins. Um, I think they have vitamin E, which is like really good for your skin. So I definitely recommend avocados. They're like my favorite. I know that is the most millennial thing I think I've ever said on this video or on my channel in general, but I definitely recommend avocados as a part of your diet. Another thing is smoothies. Smoothies, I love so much because you can put so many things in them. My favorite things are flax seeds to put in them. I haven't done it in a while, but it's so good. You can also do peanut butter, which adds protein. You can do uh, fruits, you can do veggies. You can do so many things that you need in your diet and it's pretty low calorie if you're specifically looking for a healthier diet or a healthier lifestyle. I just love smoothies so much. They're delicious. They're super nutritious if you're putting the right things in them. I just love smoothies, so I definitely recommend those. And like I said, when you're first getting started, if you need to do protein powder, you can put those in your smoothies as well. But like I said, don't go overboard and ingest too much. And lastly, my last piece of advice is to ignore the haters. I've been vegetarian for 10 years, like I said, and I have a lot of haters. Every time I meet new people, they ask me these questions. It drives me absolutely insane after 10 years. I'm tired of answering the questions, but just have patience, just be loving and ignore the hate. People ask me all the time. This is, okay, this is something that also really annoys me. Blake and I had best friends of a long time ago, whenever we would talk to them, like catching up or seeing them in person, they would always ask me, are you still vegetarian? That just drives me absolutely insane. Like every time we were with them, are you still vegetarian? Are you still vegetarian? This mentality that vegetarianism or veganism is like a fad or like a phase, we need to phase that out, honestly. And I'm not saying that like you can't eventually eat meat again, or like I said, I was, ve I was vegan and I went back to vegetarian. I'm not saying that, but it is so annoying being asked all the time, oh, are you still vegetarian? vegetarian oh, or are you still vegetarian yes i'm still vegetarian <laughs> drives me absolutely insane if your parents have an objection to it if you're younger or your husband or your spouse or anything like that i would say take the time be patient to educate them and to tell them the reasons why you really want to do this tell them what you're going to do to support yourself and support each other if it's important for them to have meat in the house or if it is important for them that you partake in meals with them let them know okay i will eat the sides and i will make my own main course or or, you know, any of those things. I just think that it's important to sit down and educate them and explain to them the reasons why you want to do it, what you're going to do to help them and help yourself. And just give it time as well, because a lot of people find vegetarianism or veganism or pescatarianism or any of these things weird at first. And then over time, I think that a lot of people get more used to it and understand the reasons why. And I think that it is definitely becoming more of a universal thing than it used to be. That's for sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you did enjoy. I hope that I helped you out some way, whether I've taught you something or whether I'm helping you transition or whether you are a meat eater and you simply just wanted to learn more. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below if you would like to see more of my videos. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye guys!